What's up YouTube, it's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Today, I'm doing another gear review. I'm gonna do my first elk hunt this season. I'm super excited for it and I've been buying all the gear and I'm trying to do it on a budget because you know how it is, you could spend thousands of dollars getting all the gear that you need uh, for an elk trip, especially when you're new to it and you don't have any of the gear yet. None of the gear that I'm buying right now really applies to Florida, so everything that I'm taking on that trip is gonna be brand new. So I'm trying to cut some corners, trying to figure out some things that I can buy that'll save me a little bit of money. So today, I'm looking at bivy tents. That is a big deer. And he didn't go 30 yards. Oh my God. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo, what a rush. Money, that deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. You shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. And before we dive into this video, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you like the content of the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about this review or if you have any suggestions for things that we should do gear reviews on, drop a comment down below. We really appreciate the feedback. One last announcement. It is gear season, but it is also event season. This is a time of year when Danny and I and the rest of the Swamp and Stomp crew, as well as our friends over at Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, are putting together a bunch of events so that we can get hunters together to do fun stuff. So there's a number of events that we're putting together, including a scouting workshop. We've got some archery events, all kinds of cool stuff. Go check out our Facebook page. There's a link down in the description um, and you can look at the events page there to see what we have coming up. We'd love to meet some of you guys. So come on out to these events. I went ahead, I was looking for some cheap bivy tents. Couldn't decide which one I wanted. Uh, so I just bought three of them that I thought would potentially be a good fit uh, for what I need. Um, so the ones that we've got, we've got the gear top. Um, just judging by the pictures, it looks like this is going to be the smaller of the three. Um, it's also the lightest. Then we've got the Winterial, uh, and all of these were bought on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I think this one was like 90 bucks. This one's like 84. Um, and then this one is Eureka, which I think is like the only one that's actually a real brand name. This one was 112. So uh, they're only about $30 apart between the three of them. Um, but these are relatively cheap. If you've ever looked at Vivi tents, you know that these things can be up to like three, four hundred dollars. Um, and when you do get those that are really expensive, you do get a really lightweight uh, Vivi tent. So those ones would be in the ballpark of about two pounds. These are a little heavier. I think this one's advertised as two point or two pounds, 10 ounces. I think this one's a little less than that. Um, but I've got my scale here. And the first thing I'm going to do is weigh them. Uh, so that we get a better idea of how accurate those descriptions are. So this is the Winterial, um, and I will put up the advertised weights of these things um, on the screen somewhere right around there, because uh, I don't remember what it is. Let me zero this thing out. There we go. All right, we're looking at... 3.2 pounds on the Winterial. We've got a 2.65, 2.65. This guy might be the heaviest. This is the Eureka. Oh, not the heaviest, 3.13. So the heaviest is the Winterial. So now I'm gonna pull these things out. I've never set them up before. I'm going to set them up. We're going to see how long it takes me to set them up for the first time ever without using any instructions because I think that's a pretty good measure of how easy they are to set up. Let's get into it. All right, first up, the Eureka. The timer starts right now. Next up, Utah. 
and the timer starts right now. All right, I think that's it. Seems kind of soft, but I think that's it. I guess that's it. All right, the last one, the winterial. The timer starts now. Well, that was way faster. Um, my impression was that the uh, the gear top was kind of the most difficult setup because it has an extra tent pole and they crisscross. And so uh, it was kind of difficult to figure out how that was gonna be set up. At first I was trying not to crisscross them, but then I realized they were too long. So then I realized I had to crisscross them. Um, so that was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, but now that I know that, I feel like I could set it up a little faster because of that. Um, and as far as the Eureka and the Winterial go, they were pretty similar. The Winterial was actually kind of easy because instead of having to feed that, um, that tent pole through a tube, um, like I had to do with the other ones, it had those clips and then the rain flies actually separate on it. At first I thought that was actually going to make it like take longer because I had to put the rain fly down like on top of it. Uh, whereas the other ones already had it attached, but I ended up getting through it pretty quickly. So uh, Maybe it's not that as big of a problem as I thought it would be um, Just looking at them right now. It looks like the wind is going to be the widest um, And it's going to give me the most space. So it kind of makes sense that it's also the heaviest um, Then the Eureka is going to be somewhere in the middle and it looks like the Eureka is the tallest So it'll give me a little bit of space up above my head when I'm sleeping in there. So that'll be really nice and then the gear top uh, is significantly smaller than both of the other ones. Um, <clears throat> but I've got my sleeping pad here. This is a climate something or another. This is the, the pad I'm going to be using. So I'm going to blow this up and I'm going to stick it in to these tents. And I'm going to lay down in there and get a feel for how much space there actually is. All right, so we're going to start with the gear top. Like I said, this is the lightest of the three but it also is the smallest of the three one nice thing about it though is that it does have a side entry um which is just going to make it a little easier to get in the thing um, of course it is incredibly windy right now so it does have a um like a mesh side All my stuff is blown away. Let's see how comfortable it is to slip inside of here. Ooh. Okay. It's a little claustrophobic in here, not gonna lie. It's a little narrow too. Um, I mean, there is no extra space here whatsoever. There is a nice little window right here and a little window down there. So that's gonna allow um, a lot of air to move through here. It's gonna prevent condensation. So that's pretty good. Um, one thing I don't like about this tent is that in a lot of places, it's a single ply. Um, there's there's no inner and outer tent. And I don't know this from experience, but I've heard that that is gonna cause a lot of condensation to build up inside the tent and your stuff will start getting wet. So 
it's not ideal. Um, and I also don't like that, you know, this is pretty flat and it's gonna, if it rains really hard, then that's gonna like have water pool up on it. Um, and that's just gonna increase the potential for it to leak. Um, and also I noticed, you know, before I got in it, you can see that this isn't taut. The, the tent material is not completely tight. And I kind of tried to tighten up the, uh, the guy lines to tighten that material up, but I couldn't get it to tighten. Which again, if it's gonna rain, there's a really good chance that that's gonna cause water to pool up and start leaking. Um, <clears throat> overall, this tent is feeling kind of flimsy to me. So I'm not super impressed. It is worth mentioning though that right up here, there are little pockets. You can put like your phone and stuff like that. So, but this tent is pretty, um, pretty tight. So, not super impressed with this, even though it is the lightest of the three. Um, I think I'd rather carry a little extra weight. It's like half a pound more to carry those other ones. I got a feeling those are gonna be way more comfortable. So let's go check those out. Let's get into the Eureka. So this one, you slide in from the top. So this definitely makes it a little bit tricky to get in. Um, figure out where the zipper is to open this thing. There it is. Okay, so it does kind of open up like towards the side here so you can open both of these little fly things. So it's a good size entrance. Let me grab my pad. So, you can already tell this thing has way more space. Look at how much space there is on either side. I know you guys can only see one side, but there's an equal amount of space on both. So let me crawl in there. Okay. Oh yeah, that's way better. That is way more space. In fact, there's so much space. If I scooted my pad all the way to the bottom, um, I would probably have enough space to put my pack right here at the top, um, which would be cool. There's also a zipper here. I don't really know why. I guess to, I really don't know what that's for. It doesn't really make a lot of sense because the fly the rain flies like attached so I don't see why you would need to open this maybe just to create a little extra insulation I guess so there is um, some pockets right here these little corner pockets you can stick a phone there's one on this side as well um, but this is definitely a lot more spacious and honestly the, the whole thing feels like a higher quality uh, that gear top feels really cheap this feels much better. Um, and it's also worth mentioning that this mesh is a noceum mesh. So if you're using it in Florida, um, this will keep the noceums out. <clears throat> Whereas I think the mesh that was on that other one is a thicker, is a, like a larger size mesh. And noceums will probably slip right through that and destroy you. So definitely impressed with this one so far. It's definitely looking better than the gear top. And this one, if I remember correctly, was like two ounces lighter than the Winterial, which we're gonna go check out right now. So it's actually pretty easy to get in and out of. I thought that was gonna be a lot more difficult, but it's really not that bad. All right, I didn't really think about where the door was on this one, so this is kind of set up in the wrong spot for you guys to watch me get in and out of this thing but this one just like the, uh, the gear top is is a um, side side loader I don't know what you call it um, so this one you get in from the side and there's this handy dandy little uh, these little toggle thingies here to hold it open I don't believe the gear top had 
So that's kind of nice. Definitely makes it a little easier. Let me get my pad, throw it in there. <coughs> I'm gonna bring you guys over to the other side here. You'll be able to see a little better from here. All right. Okay, my phone fell out. All right, first things, there's a little pocket right here. You can stick stuff in. Bone, whatever. There's another pocket right here. You can stick stuff in. And um, I kind of like that you can like sit up in this one like this. Um, you know, if you're if you're in the wind, you'd still get wind blowing over at your head and stuff. But you'd have a little bit of a wind break, so when you wake up in the morning, you could potentially use this to kind of cook right here. Uh, you know, make a coffee and stuff like that. So I kind of do like that. So this one's a little shorter than the Eureka, but it's not uncomfortably short. Like, I mean, for me, I'm 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, uh, if you're a tall guy, this one's definitely not for you, um, but it has a lot more space than the, um, the gear top. Uh, the Eureka actually has a little bit more space, it seems, um, but this one has a lot more like of a gap between the rain fly and the uh, the mesh so that's gonna allow for a little more circulation and one thing I do notice about this one is it it doesn't really have um, any like windows um, but I've also heard that if you have a, um, a, a separate rain fly from the the mesh part of the tent you don't really have to worry about the condensation so much because you get air circulation that goes up underneath the rain fly. So, so it's probably not really an issue. This tent feels um, <clears throat> kind of heavy duty. Um, now, I don't know if it's that this material is just cheaper and that's why it feels heavier to accomplish the same as the uh, Eureka, but it just feels heavier, like heavier duty. So that might be why it is in fact heavier is that it, it might just be better built. Um, and again, I do really like the way that uh, the poles attached to the tent here with those little clips, that makes it really easy. Um, but I actually, I was kind of expecting to not like this one. It was like the cheapest one. I think it was $84, but I actually do like it. Um, but if price was not an issue, I would say the Eureka is the nicest of these three. And I would go, I'm going to, I think I'll go with the Eureka. Um, then this one, and then the gear top, which honestly, I don't, I wouldn't want to use that one. I think that one's potentially uh, asking for trouble when you're out there in the cold. Um, I think that one's going to fail you. Uh, but either one of these would work. I, I like the Eureka. Um, but with that said, when I bought these three, I wasn't aware of another type of tent. Uh, which I discovered later. Uh, I discovered it today, actually. And this is a type of tent that doesn't have any poles, uh, but instead it uses one of your trekking poles to set, and it weighs less than the gear top. It's just under, or sorry, no, I lied. It is about the same as the gear top, a little bit less. It's like 2.5 pounds, uh, but it is way bigger than these, and it has a vestibule. So I'm kind of interested in that tent and I ordered one and it's on the way. So I'm just gonna add it in the video right now. All right, what's up guys? It's a different day. I had to wait for this tent to come in. This is the uh, River Country Trekker One tent. Uh, you may notice my voice sounds a little different because when I filmed the other part of this video, I did not have COVID and now I do. <clears throat> so things are great anyway let's get a little weight on this guy all 
right, it's saying 2.8 pounds, which is a little more than what was advertised. I think it said 2.5 pounds. Um, but either way, that's still lighter than the two bivy tents that I that I did like. All right, so the timer on this guy starts right now, but let's keep in mind I'm a little slower this week than I was last week. This particular tent is that it has a vestibule so it's got a place for me to keep my pack on the outside here um, and like I mentioned it uses the trekking pole that I'm already carrying anyway um, and it's got headspace so I should be able to sit up in this thing which is an aspect of it that I really like but certainly going to make it a little more comfortable to sleep in here. And immediately, I can tell you that is the case. Um, this definitely doesn't feel anywhere near as confined. It's got way more space and, uh, and it's going to be uh, a lot more comfortable and it really weighs like the same as any of the bivvies so I'm pretty excited about this I need to read the, the manual to make sure I set this up like exactly right because uh, I'm sure I can get these to be a little tighter but even if they're not super tight I'm not terribly worried because uh, the pitch of this tent material is steep enough that even when it's not super taut if it rains, that water's going to beat off of it real easily. Um, so I don't really, I'm not as worried about it leaking. Um, and then on top of that, even if I was, I'm probably going to pitch uh, a thin tarp over top of this for extra cover um, and to help keep condensation off of it. So one thing is worth noticing or noting is the bottom of this tent um, is a little thin so it wouldn't be the worst idea to lay down like an underlayment under this tent but yeah I mean I, I really like this um, this is probably this is gonna be my choice for ultra light backpacking style tent um, and again I love that my boots and my pack can sit right here when I'm sleeping and that's gonna keep me uh, keep all my stuff nice and dry. It's right where I need, need it if I need to get in there. And in the morning when I wake up and I'm not quite ready to get out of my tent when it's like 20 something degrees out, I can cook breakfast right here in this vestibule. So yeah, this is gonna be it for me. Super excited about that. Um, so hopefully you guys found this video useful. Um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And uh, like I said before, if this is the first time seeing one of our videos, Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's gear season, so there's going to be lots more of these kinds of videos coming up. And I've bought a lot of gear for this elk trip, so there's going to be more uh, gear reviews specifically geared towards that kind of hunting. Although normally we might be focused more on the Florida style. Um, but, you know, there's an incredible amount of overlap between uh, the different styles of hunting. Um, anyway. Thank you guys for watching and uh, please go check out our YouTube or sorry our Facebook page um, where we have a bunch of events coming up here soon. We'd love to see you guys there. Uh, so go check that out and uh, hopefully we'll catch you at one of those. Until next week, peace. And holy crap it is hot in there. <laughs>